Today I will discuss the concept of the moment of a force and so how to calculate it in two and three dimensions. The moment of a force about a point provides a measure of the tendency for rotation, sometimes called a torque, but most often is called the moment of a force or simply the moment. For example, consider a wrench used to unscrew the bolt. If a force is applied to the handle of the wrench, it will tend to turn the bolt about point O or the Z axis. The magnitude of the moment is directly proportional to the magnitude of the force and the perpendicular distance or moment arm. The larger the force or the longer the moment arm, the greater the moment or the turning effect will be. However, if force is applied along the wrench, its moment arm will be zero since the line of action of force will intersect point O, the Z axis. As a result, the moment of force about O is also zero and no turning can occur. Now consider the force F and point O which lie in the shaded plane. The moment about point O or about an axis passing through O and perpendicular to the plane is a vector quantity since it has specified magnitude and direction. The magnitude of this quantity is the force times moment arm. Its unit is Newton meter. The right hand rule is used to establish the sense of moment. According to this rule, the natural curve of the fingers of the right hand as they are drawn towards the palm represents the tendency for rotation caused by the moment. As this action is performed, the thumbs of the right hand rule will give the direction sense of moment. In two dimensions, this vector is represented only by curl, since in this case the moment will tend to cause a counterclockwise rotation. The moment vector is actually directed out of the page. For two dimensional problems, where all the forces lie within the xy plane, the resultant moment about O, the z axis, can be determined by finding the algebraic sum of the moments caused by all the forces in the system. Using sign convention, the resultant moment is therefore in this equation. If the numerical result of this sum is positive scalar, resultant moment will be counterclockwise out of the page and if the result is negative, moment will be clockwise into the page. While finding the moment of a force in 2D is a straightforward when you know the perpendicular distance t, finding the perpendicular distances can be hard, especially when you are working with forces in three dimensions. So a more general approach to finding the moment of a force exists this more general approach is usually used when dealing with three-dimension force, but can also be used in the two-dimensional case. This more general method of finding the moment of a force uses a vector operation called the cross product of two vectors. In general, the cross product of two vectors A and B results in another vector C, such as C equal to A cross B. The magnitude and direction of the resultant vector can be determined as c equal to a cross b and that's further equal to a times b times sine theta times unit vector. As shown, uc is the unit vector perpendicular to both a and b vectors or to the plane containing the a and b vectors. The right hand rules is useful tool for determining the direction of the vector resulting from a cross product. For example, i cross j results k also notice that a vector cross into itself results zero, such as i cross i give you zero. Also the cross product can be written as determinant, such as shown here. Each component can be determined using two cross two determinants. Moments in 3D can be calculated using scalar approach, but it can be difficult and time consuming. Thus, it is often easier to use mathematical approach called the vector cross product. Using the vector cross product, m0 equal to r cross f. Here, r is the position vector from point O to any point on the line of action of force. We have already covered how to measure the position of a point in the previous videos. So, using the cross product, a moment can be expressed in the form of this equation. By expanding the above equation using two cross two determinants, we get the moment equation about point O. 
The physical meaning of the above equation becomes evident by considering the force component separately and using a 2D formulation. Let's consider this example in which a hundred newton force is applied to the frame and it asks to find the moment of the force at point O. So first resolve the hundred newton force along the xy axis, then determine moment about O using the scalar analysis for the two forces components and add those two moments together. So in the solution, the y component is minus hundred and two three by five newtons the x component is 100 into 4 by 5 newtons and the moment about O can simply be added. The first part is the y component which is at a distance of 5 meters and then the x component force which is at a moment of 2 meters. Notice that it produces counterclockwise rotation so the moment must be negative which is minus 460 newton meter. The second example, which is based on the position vector, the force in geometry is shown. It asks to find moment of force F about point O. So first we will find the position vector R O B and then we will take a cross product of this position vector with force vector. So to find the position vector R O B, see the point of force application B with respect to O the position vector turns out to be 0i plus 3j plus 1.5 k meters. Then finding the moment by using the cross product of position vector and force and this results 25.5i plus 9j plus 18k newton meters. Thanks for watching.